we started talking about ensemble methods and the very first uh, approach that we're going to look at is the uh, voting classifier. So this is a class in and of itself that's available out of uh, scikit-learn. The uh, constructor for this class takes a list of primitive uh, classifiers. And uh, for each one of those, we're, we've already chosen our hyperparameters. And we can uh, choose with this particular class uh, whether or not we're going to do hard or soft uh, voting. If we do select soft voting, however, the, uh, the method predict prob A must be available for all of the component classifiers. When we call fit on an instance of uh, this uh, class, what it will do is it will turn around and call fit on each one of the component classifiers. And uh, predict will do the same thing. It will take the uh, inputs, provide those to each one of the classifiers in sequence, and then uh, use the chosen voting scheme in order to combine the results. So let's take a look at a little bit of code. So you already have this available as a skeleton in your Git repository. Uh, the couple of things that I have uh, added here, uh, well, in particular, the one that we're using right now is the voting classifier right there. Let's go ahead and load that up. Um, I've also augmented our scatterplot uh, function here. Uh, it now takes as input uh, two different sets of inputs and outputs. You can provide just the one, but you can also provide the two. Uh, Sorry, I don't have any documentation hiding in here. Uh, as before, it, it uh, looks at the uh, output and decides whether to, uh, to present the, the points in uh, red or green, depending upon whether or not we have uh, a true uh, label or a, a false label. However, for the, uh, the other pair here, if, if these are not none, then, uh, then we'll execute uh, this little bit of code here, which does the same thing. It pulls out, uh, it figures out which elements are uh, trues, which ones are false, and then plots the, the, generates a scatter plot. And the difference here is instead of plotting dots, it's going to plot uh, a, a somewhat larger circle. So we'll be able to tell the difference between uh, the pairs that are coming in here. Really, it's the, the ins that are coming in here and the ins that are coming in uh, over here. We'll, we'll use the small dots for training set and the larger dots for, uh, for, for our uh, validation set. Just as a reminder, uh, when we write uh, a parameter in this way, uh, this ins2 here is an optional parameter, and if it is not provided by the caller, then it's set to none, in which case this block of code does not get executed. I've dropped this in here. We're not actually using it for this uh, particular demonstration, but we'll use it a little bit later down the road. Down the road. Uh, I've created uh, another somewhat contrived uh, data set here. And uh, the very first thing that uh, I'm going to do is chop it into two pieces, our ins ones, outs ones, and ins and outs twos. Uh, here, what we're going to do is use uh, the first in this case, 100 samples as training, and the other, uh, the, the rest as uh, validation. So that's what the data set looks like. So again, uh, the, uh, the small dots are what we'll be using for training and the large dots for validation. Uh, for, for this particular data set, I actually have really six different clusters here. There are three red clusters, and there's a green cluster right in this vicinity here, another one right here, and then one over here. We explicitly designed this that, so that uh, there's a little bit of tension here between what the different classifiers uh, can do, and we'll talk about that when we look at, the, look at it. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our set of uh, classifiers here. Uh, what, we'll, what we're going to do is pull out a... Uh, a decision tree uh, classifier, uh, a support vector machine classifier with a polynomial kernel, and we'll also use a logistic regression classifier. What I'd like to do is look at what each of those is capable of in independently, and then when we combine them together with a voting classifier, the question is what, what do we end up with? So let's go ahead and set that up. And I'm gonna set uh, regularization pretty tight here to make, to make a point. In general, we'll probably 
uh, we'll probably do more, but with three leaf nodes, this uh, particular classifier can have uh, at most two questions. Since we're only working in a, a 2D feature space, this is not a, uh, we, we, we can't express very complicated, uh, uh, complicated problems here. So we're going to inhibit the capabilities of our uh, classifiers a bit. Next one is our uh, support vector classifier. And we're gonna use polynomial kernel here. And, and it's gonna be a two degree polynomial. And we'll set gamma to auto. And the last classifier is our logistic regression. Set random state to none, so we get different answers for every every time we execute this. And we're going to do a little bit of regularization here. This particular regularization parameter is probably not so important, but it's worth uh, playing with in the future. Okay, so there there are three classifiers. I'll go ahead and create those. And then let's go ahead and fit our data to the individual classifiers and see what they can do. Uh, so uh, uh, here, here we're uh, working with our decision tree uh, classifier. Um, I'm going to fit the data to data set one and then uh, compute the predictions uh, for uh, data sets one and two respectively, and then generate that scatter plot. Uh, for both uh, data sets uh, based on the predictions, not the original data. And then, uh, and then we can also score this uh, classifier. Uh, in this case, this is an accuracy score. So let's go ahead and run that. It should go pretty quick, and it does. So, so there we are. Uh, so this is one classifier. It's getting an accuracy of 82%. And, uh, and, and you can kind of, you can kind of see if you look carefully where the boundaries are, the axis parallel boundaries are for our decision tree. And in particular, there's one that runs horizontally along here, and there's definitely one that runs vertically along here. So those are probably our two questions inside of this particular decision tree. Let's compare this against what our original training set looks like. And let me show you a new trick here. Um, you can, uh, you can, for the existing notebook, if you right click on the tab, you can say new view for notebook. And what it does is it, it doesn't create a copy. This is, this is uh, a, second, uh, a second view on the same notebook. This actually makes it useful for when you're uh, editing uh, in multiple places within your notebooks. Um, here, what I'm doing is, uh, I, the, what's on the right hand side here, this is our original data set. You notice that the, there is some overlap in the categories and that's, that's okay. We're, that's making it a little bit more of a hard problem. And, uh, and uh, on the left hand side is what our decision tree is, is able to do. Um, and you can, you can see it actually does a, a reasonable job of especially capturing this cluster over here on the right hand side. It's cutting off that middle cluster to uh, a small degree. Uh, and it's also cutting off, it's mislabeling the green down in here and it's mislabeling the red uh, uh, up in here. And, and if we were to throw more uh, capability at this decision tree, we'd, we'd do better. And I encourage you to play with that a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna shrink this down so we can go back to where we were. So that's what our uh, decision tree classifier is able to do. Here's our support vector machine uh, classifier. And it is unhappy. Uh-oh. Okay, so some of you probably caught this, but uh, I, I had a, a miss uh, type here. It should have said gamma equals auto. Uh, somehow the T got dropped there, so I'm gonna execute that again. And now our support vector machine is gonna be happier. Here I'm getting also an 82.8% uh, accuracy. And uh, one thing that's kind of cool here, remember that this is a, 
a, a two degree polynomial. So this is a quadratic shape. And you can actually see the quadratic decision surface cutting right through here and then turning back, uh, turning back up. And, and so it's capturing nominally that, uh, that shape here. Let's bring back our, uh, our original data so that so the, the red sort of forms a, a, a bit of a quadratic bowl there, and, and that's the, the shape that we're uh, learning here. What's nice about this is that the cluster on the left-hand side, that's actually be, being labeled mostly correctly. We're still mislabeling what's happening down uh, uh, in here. Those should be green. Uh, and then there should be some green right in there. Uh, and, and this should be red, this little island here should be red. Um, but the support vector machine classifier is doing what we uh, expect it to do with just two degrees of freedom. Sorry, with a two degree polynomial. Okay, so let's look at our logistic regression. We're going through the same process. We're gonna fit that. Uh, uh, fit, fit the model with the uh, data set one and then predict for data sets one and two and, and plot that and score it. And remember, remember that the decision surface for regist, logistic regression is a linear surface. So we kind of expect that in our data set here, or in, in our answer here. And you can see that that line that runs uh, straight across uh, this uh, the, this feature space. So let's let's uh, compare that against what's going on with with the uh, with the original data. And so we're we're misclassifying this region down in here. In fact, this whole area here, misclassifying this area here. But are actually doing we're, we're capturing this cluster really well. We're capturing half of this cluster, but we're missing up in here. Uh, so, so this is because we're, because it is a linear decision surface. It really can't uh, capture the data all that well. And in fact, our accuracy is at uh, seventy percent. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and try a voting classifier. So what we uh, end up doing is that the first parameter for the voting classifier is a list of tuples uh, that contain the, the different models. So the first element of each tuple is a name. So I'm just going to call it tree, and that's classifier one. So that's our first tuple. And then our next tuple will be our support vector machine uh, classifier. And then the last tuple will be our uh, logistic regression. Okay. okay, and then let me add a couple more parameters here. First off, we're gonna try a hard voting to begin with. And I'm gonna set n jobs equal to negative one. By setting n jobs to negative one, uh, what it says is use all of the cores that are available on the machine to to do the learning process uh, because these models are independent of one another what uh, the voting classifier training process will do is it will ship off uh, one of these to uh, its own core um, support vector regression will take the, the longest so it, it tends to be the one that that runs uh, you, you, you can ca catch it running uh, when the tree and logistic regression are done um, by setting it to negative one, that's a safe thing for you to be doing, even on our server, which has just one core. But uh, what's nice is your code can then be ported elsewhere. Okay, so that's building our voting classifier, and and then we need to make our uh, we need to fit our data, and we're going to hand it our training set, and that's that's it. That that is uh, the entire training process. And again, it handles the, the training for each one of the individual uh, components. And now let's query both the training and the validation set. And we'll do the same for the validation set. 
And then let's look at the scatter plot. And let's score it. And again, we're just scoring the validation data. So that'll take a, just a moment to, to run. Uh, and there we go. So, so we ended up with an 83.2% accuracy, whereas up above uh, our best, let's see, we had 70% from logistic regression, 82.8 .8 for SVC, and 82% for the decision tree. So, so we've got a, a tiny increment above what any of the constituent uh, uh, classifiers could do uh, in this particular case. Here is the, uh, uh, what the uh, result looks like uh, in, the, in the scatter plot. And that's actually, that's actually quite nice. Let's compare that to what our true data look like. In fact, that looks, oh, of course. Uh, I thought it looked too good. Uh, it should be pred2 uh, as our scatter, uh, our uh, scatter plot and our scoring should be based on pred2. There we go. Voting classifier, I did have it set up properly. So 83.2% uh, accuracy. Okay, now the the uh, uh, the result does not look too good to be true. So, so this is a, a lesson to you. Uh, if your results look too good to be true, then something is probably wrong. And it's good to take a step back uh, before we were getting a perfect match with our true data. Let's kind of zoom that out a little bit. We're still misclassifying this region here and down in this region over here and then up here. Um, but we are, for the most part, getting this cluster, which is which is nice. The change from 80 to 83.2 uh, versus the support vector machine, which was giving us 82.8, that's that's just a, a couple of samples uh, difference, a couple samples improvement. It, it's not a wonderful story to to tell, but it is a, a tiny increment. Okay, so remember that the hard the, the hard classification, the hard voting process. For classification, we're asking for a class label from each one of our classifiers, and then we're counting up how many trues we have, how many falses we have, and whichever we have a majority of. That, that's the label from the voting classifier. But we can also do a soft, soft classifier. And uh, as it turns out, that so the tree classifier already does predict prob A, logistic regression also will give us a probability distribution if we ask for it. Um, but Remember that our support vector machine classifier does not necessarily do that uh, automatically, and we actually have to tell it to uh, to compute some extra data in order to provide that. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so by adding uh, probability equal true, that adds the extra the extra computation to the support vector machine in order to compute those probabilities. That, that of course, will take more time in the learning process. But let's go ahead and pan back down, uh, give this a try. So I'm gonna switch this over from, uh, well, let's build a second voting classifier here. And we'll set it to do soft voting. And, and for this approach, as we've already talked about, uh, what uh, the voting classifier will do is ask each of the constituent classifiers what the probability distribution is and then compute the average of the probabilities and then give a class label that is the, the max uh, probability. So, so what's nice about this is that I, I might have a, a two to one hard count, but one of those on the two side might actually be rather uh, unsure and it, internally the probability might be something much closer to 50 percent uh, and so in that situation we might actually tip the, the balance a little bit so let's go ahead and create that voting classifier there we go and I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of that code so that we can uh, do the fit there we go 
So that'll take a moment to, uh, to actually do the, the fitting and the, uh, the prediction, but not too long. So, so now we're, our probability is up to 84.8%. So we've uh, increased by almost another uh, 2%. And in particular, this is, uh, I believe, 2% above what the support vector machine uh, classifier does on its own. So, so what we've done is we've, we've switched our, the, the labels on uh, a few of the samples, just a small handful to, to achieve this little bit better performance. All right, so that's, so that's a, a quick demo, and hopefully that gives you a, 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 a sense of what some of the, these different classifiers can do individually and what can happen when we actually uh, combine the uh, classifiers together with this voting classifier. If you were to give uh, the support vector machine classifier or the decision tree classifier more capabilities, so, so we pulled back on the regularization for the decision tree, uh, allowed more leaf nodes, or we allowed higher uh, de degree polynomial for the support vector machine, you can actually do uh, better with this uh, data set. Because in the original data, our, our greens and reds overlap some, you're never really going to get down to a, a situation where you're achieving a, a, a perfect uh, classification, but one could certainly uh, do better than the 84.8% that we have already. So before you move on, that's worth playing with a, a little bit. One of the downsides with the voting uh, classifier is that we've created each of these classifiers uh, independently of one another, and uh, especially the, the decision tree and the support vector uh, classifier, they're really grabbing a hold of the same data in the training set in order to construct their boundaries. The boundaries look a bit different, but for the most part, they're covering very overlapping uh, uh, sets of samples. Uh, as we move forward to more interesting problems, what we really want to do is force the different classifiers in our ensemble to look at different parts of the feature space. And that's up next.